We all know that Jupiter is the largest and most massive planet in our solar system. But how much massive? That is the question. If we combine the mass of all the other seven planets in solar system, Jupiter still will be 2.5 times more massive than that. Jupiter is so massive that when it orbits around Sun, it will make the mighty Sun wobble around. Even if we learn about Jupiter in school, most of us do not know a lot of fascinating things about Jupiter. For instance, unlike many other planets, Jupiter emits more light than it receives from the Sun. This indicates that Jupiter has an internal energy source. Another interesting aspect about Jupiter is its ever-changing appearance. The horizontal bands that we see on Jupiter is not the same in all pictures, because these lines move relative to each other. This makes us wonder what those bands really are. Despite its immense size, Jupiter might not have a solid surface like Earth at all. In this video, we will uncover eight lesser-known but amazing facts about Jupiter. Hi friends, welcome to a new episode of Science Simplified for All. Jupiter is the third brightest object in the night sky, after Moon and Venus. So, it can be easily spotted among other objects in the night sky. Jupiter has been observed by humans from very early times. It is mentioned in the writings of many ancient cultures. So, we cannot credit its discovery to any one person or civilization. Jupiter is often described as the big brother among the planets. This is not just because it is massive. Throughout the solar system's 4.5 billion year history, Jupiter's powerful gravitational force has influenced nearly every planet at some point. Jupiter has played a crucial role in shaping the solar system as we know it today. In this video, we will not cover the basic facts about Jupiter that you might already know from school. Instead, we will focus on some lesser-known fascinating facts about Jupiter. We all know that Jupiter is the most massive planet in the solar system. But to know the real extent of its mass, we should compare it with other planets. This table shows the masses of all the planets in solar system. We are using mass of Earth as our reference. That is, mass of Earth is one Earth mass. Mass of other planets are mentioned in terms of Earth masses. Among the four terrestrial planets Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, Earth has the largest mass. Mass of the other three is less than one Earth mass. In the table, you can see that Jupiter's mass is 317 times that of Earth. Even the second massive planet, Saturn, do not come anywhere near it. Saturn's mass is only 95 times that of Earth. Uranus and Neptune have masses of just 14 and 17 times that of Earth, respectively. Even if we combine the masses of all the other planets, Jupiter's mass is still two and a half times greater. Each time Jupiter orbits the Sun, it causes a noticeable displacement to the Sun, making it wobble. When one object revolves around another due to gravity, like the Moon around the Earth or the Earth around the Sun, both objects actually revolve around a common center of mass, known as the Bari center. If both the objects have equal mass, this Bari center will be halfway between them. In such cases, both objects orbit around this point. This is what happens in the case of a binary star system. However, if one object is significantly more massive, the Bari center will be closer to the more massive object. If that object is extremely massive compared to the other, the Bari center will be inside the massive object. This makes the smaller object appear to orbit the larger one. For example, the Bari center of the Earth-Moon system lies within the Earth. So we can always say, the Moon orbits the Earth. But that is not the case with Jupiter and the Sun. The Bara center of the Jupiter-Sun system is actually outside the Sun. This means that Jupiter and the Sun both orbit around this common point. Every time Jupiter completes an orbit, the Sun moves a distance greater than its own diameter due to Jupiter's immense mass. That is why I told earlier that Jupiter makes the Sun wobble. The Bari center of the other planets with the Sun lies within the Sun, so they do not make the Sun move very much while they orbit around it. If Jupiter, just a planet in solar system, can even make Sun, the king of solar system, wobble, 
Just imagine how massive it is. Now, let us explore the internal structure of Jupiter. Earth is a terrestrial planet. It is primarily composed of solid materials like rocks and soil. On the other hand, Jupiter is a gas giant. It is made up of 90% hydrogen and the rest is helium. Other elements are present only in trace amounts. Since hydrogen and helium are gases, we are not sure whether Jupiter has a solid surface like Earth. When we look at images of Jupiter, what we see is not the surface of Jupiter. These are actually clouds that are floating at the top of Jupiter's atmosphere. The atmosphere of Jupiter is predominantly hydrogen with small amount of helium. Additionally, small amounts of gases such as ammonia, methane, hydrogen sulfide and nitrogen are present. The clouds mainly contain compounds like ammonia and ammonium hydrosulfide. Jupiter's atmosphere is approximately 3,000 kilometers thick. As you move deeper into this atmosphere, the pressure increases significantly. When the pressure on any gas exceeds a certain limit, it becomes liquid. Thus, beyond certain depth, the gaseous hydrogen changes its state into liquid hydrogen. If you go further inside Jupiter, you will find only liquid hydrogen. It is in the form of a vast ocean. That liquid hydrogen ocean is the largest ocean in our solar system. But it does not end there. As you go deeper into this liquid hydrogen ocean, the pressure continues to rise. Eventually, hydrogen enters a rare state known as metallic hydrogen. Although still in liquid form, it exhibits metallic properties. The single electron in each hydrogen atom becomes free, similar to what happens in metals. This makes the metallic liquid hydrogen a conductor of electricity. The region of metallic hydrogen is the most abundant part of Jupiter's interior. Some scientists suggest that Jupiter may have a solid core roughly the size of Earth. However, recent studies using the Juno spacecraft indicate that even if such a core exists, it is likely diffused within the metallic hydrogen. Near Jupiter's center, the temperature reaches about 19,700 degrees Celsius, which is four times the temperature of the Sun's surface. This heat originated during the formation of Jupiter. When an object contracts due to gravity, it generates energy in the form of heat. This is the same process that triggers fusion reactions in stars. However, Jupiter's mass is not sufficient enough to start a fusion reaction. Since Jupiter has a very large diameter, heat dissipates from it very slowly. The heat generated during its formation has not fully dissipated yet. This heat still slowly radiates out of Jupiter. Moreover, as heat radiates outward, Jupiter contracts further due to gravity, generating additional heat. This additional heat also gets radiated out. This contributes to the total energy we observe coming from Jupiter. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that Jupiter emits more energy than it receives from the Sun. Since Jupiter is located farther from the Sun than Earth, Jupiter receives less intense sunlight. Compared to that, the heat flowing out of Jupiter is really substantial. Some refer to Jupiter as a failed star because it could not ignite fusion despite having so much hydrogen. However, this label is quite inappropriate. To become a star, Jupiter would need to be at least 70 times more massive than it is now. So the gap between Jupiter and a star is much wider than it seems. But as a planet, Jupiter is exceptionally large. Its radius is approximately 70,000 kilometers. Interestingly, the smallest star ever discovered, EBLMJ 0555-57AB, has a mass 70 times that of Jupiter. But its radius is smaller, only about 60,000 kilometers. This means Jupiter is actually larger in size than this tiny star. Therefore, it is more fitting to call Jupiter an extremely successful planet rather than a failed star. As an object's mass increases, its gravity also increases. This stronger gravity compresses the object, decreasing its size and increasing its density. That is why this star, despite being 70 times more massive than Jupiter, has a smaller radius. 
as of February 2024, Jupiter has 95 natural satellites. Four of these are particularly large, Ganymede, Callisto, Io and Europa. These were discovered by Galileo in 1610 and are known as the Galilean moons. Galileo's discovery of these moons holds significant historical importance. Before this, the prevailing belief was that Earth was the centre of the universe and that all celestial bodies revolved around Earth. This concept is known as the geocentric model. However, when Galileo discovered Jupiter's moons, it became evident that there are other celestial bodies in the universe which are being orbited by smaller bodies. So, all the objects in the universe are not orbiting Earth. This was a crucial step in debunking the idea that Earth was the centre of the universe. Here are images of the Galilean moons. Ganymede is the largest among them. In fact, Ganymede is the largest satellite in the entire solar system. It is even larger than planet Mercury. Ganymede is considered a satellite only because it orbits Jupiter. If Ganymede orbited the Sun, it is big enough to be classified as a planet. This image compares the sizes of the Galilean moons with the planet Mercury and our own moon. This comparison helps us understand the approximate sizes of these four large satellites. In addition to these four, Jupiter has 91 other satellites. Essentially, Jupiter is running its own mini solar system within our solar system. Moreover, Jupiter has rings similar to Saturn's rings, but they are much thinner. Jupiter's rings were first discovered by the Voyager spacecraft in 1979. Jupiter has the strongest magnetic field among the planets in the solar system. This powerful magnetic field is primarily due to the large amount of liquid metallic hydrogen within Jupiter's interior. Metallic hydrogen is a good conductor of electricity and when combined with Jupiter's rapid rotation, it generates a powerful magnetic field through the dynamo effect. The four Galilean moons mentioned earlier are located inside this magnetic field. Consequently, spacecraft we send to explore these moons must cross this intense magnetic field. That makes such missions extremely difficult. When the solar wind emanating from the sun collides with Jupiter's magnetic field, it generates a tremendous amount of radiation. This radiation can damage the equipment on the spacecraft, making it challenging to study Jupiter's moons. Some part of the solar wind gets deflected by this magnetic field, but they enter inside through Jupiter's poles. In these regions, auroras similar to those found in Earth's polar regions are created. However, Jupiter's auroras are much stronger than those on Earth. Due to Jupiter's very strong gravitational field, many meteors and comets often collide with it. Some of you might recall the event in 1994 when a comet named Shoemaker-Levy 9 crashed into Jupiter. Two years prior, when it passed by Jupiter, the comet had broken into several pieces because of Jupiter's gravity. These pieces fell onto Jupiter two years later. Jupiter's orbit around Sun has five special positions called Lagrange points. These are the positions where a smaller object can hang out relatively stable, perfectly balanced by the combined pull of the Sun and Jupiter's gravity. Out of the five Lagrange points, two are on either side, 60 degrees away from Jupiter. These points are known as L4 and L5. In the regions surrounding these points, many asteroids get caught. They orbit the Sun along the same path as Jupiter, either ahead of or behind the planet. The asteroids that usually get dislodged from their own orbits due to several reasons are trapped in Jupiter's Lagrange points due to Jupiter's strong gravitational field. They continue to orbit the Sun, staying in the Lagrange points. Because of this, many meteorites and comets that might head towards the inner planets of the solar system are instead captured by Jupiter's gravity and do not proceed inward. This is why Jupiter is often called the bodyguard of the inner planets. However, Jupiter's gravitational influence also has its downsides. Between Mars and Jupiter, we have the main asteroid belt. Sometimes, Jupiter's gravitation disturbs these objects in stable orbits. 
causing them to deviate and sometimes head towards the inner planets. Therefore, it is difficult to say definitively whether Jupiter is more beneficial or harmful. The solar system was formed from a nebula called the Pre-Solar Nebula. Computer simulations using supercomputers have been created to study these conditions. The latest studies suggest that Jupiter was not in its current orbit during its formation, but was somewhat closer to the Sun. Today, Jupiter is located at a distance of five astronomical units from the Sun. However, when formed, it was at a distance of 3.5 astronomical units. After its formation, Jupiter migrated more closer to the Sun. During this migration, Jupiter's immense gravity absorbed much of the material in its path, preventing the formation of other planets in those regions. Currently, if we look at the solar system, we see that between Mars, which is 1.5 astronomical units away from the Sun, and Jupiter at 5 astronomical units, there is no planet. Instead, we find the asteroid belt. This gap is largely because Jupiter's strong gravitational influence prevented the material in that region from forming into a planet, leading to the formation of numerous smaller bodies instead. This also explains why Mars, which was expected to be larger than Earth, is smaller. If Jupiter had continued its inward journey, it could have gathered most of the material that formed Earth too. This would have made formation of Earth impossible. However, Saturn had already formed by then and caught up with Jupiter. The gravitational interactions between Jupiter and Saturn halted Jupiter's inward migration. An orbital resonance between Jupiter and Saturn eventually stabilized their orbits over billions of years, placing them in the positions we see today. By the time Jupiter and Saturn settled into their current orbits, Earth had already formed. The region of the solar system where Earth formed had very little water content, meaning Earth had no water at the time of formation. During Jupiter's migration to its current distance of five astronomical units, it gravitationally diverted water-rich objects into the inner solar system. Some of these objects collided with Earth, delivering the water we see today. This is why it is said that Jupiter played a crucial role in shaping the solar system as we know it. When we observe Jupiter, the horizontal bands we see are clouds in Jupiter's upper atmosphere. These bands are categorized into zones and belts, which differ slightly in chemical composition and temperature. These clouds are not static. They move due to winds in Jupiter's atmosphere. There are two main reasons for these winds on Jupiter. One is temperature differences and the other is Jupiter's rapid rotation. These zones and belts move in different directions due to Jupiter's atmospheric winds. Therefore, determining Jupiter's rotational speed based on surface features alone is challenging. Jupiter completes one rotation on its axis approximately every 10 hours. This speed is precisely measured by observing its magnetic field rotation rather than its surface features. Where these zones and belts interact or collide, powerful cyclones form. Jupiter hosts many cyclones simultaneously, with the largest known as the Great Red Spot. This cyclone is larger than Earth and boasts wind speeds exceeding 400 kilometers per hour. Astronomers first observed it over 350 years ago, but recent studies indicate its strength is declining, potentially leading to its disappearance in the future. Similar cyclones exist in Jupiter's polar regions, discovered by the Juno spacecraft. There are a lot more things to discuss about Jupiter, but due to time constraints, we will stop here for the time being. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment. Your support motivates me to create more content. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with new uploads. Thank you.